name is Claire. I'm the founder of Smarter DA Dental Assisting Exam Prep. Today, I want to look at some panoramic radiograph errors because this comes up in your school exams, also probably in um, the boards. So let's tackle that. So first of all, you see this model. The model is actually the patient. The patient will just have those teeth, the arch. That's what we're trying to capture. The photographer can be thought of the tube head. The tube head is going to move around the patient's head and capture the image. It takes two to tango. So the model has to be amazing, the patient has to be stable, positioned with the chin properly, and the photographer, which is you, the dental assistant, or other dental professionals, need to be amazing as well, directing the patient. Now let's talk about how the machine works. The machine works by having this tube head, which is the camera, rotating around, and this is where the film or the receptor is. So this is going to go around, this is the dental arch, and this focal trough that is called is very narrow, meaning that if you move maybe one, two, three millimeter forward, backwards, it's just out of alignment. You need to be exactly where this designated area is, and that's the challenge because the patient wants to move, they don't know where to put their tongue, they don't know where to put their chin, so it's up to us to know exactly what to tell the patient. But this is the proper alignment. If you see here, you see the line from the bottom of the orbit to the middle of the ear. So can you imagine here a tear? The patient is in pain, she is crying. There's a tear right here. And can you imagine a headphone over here? So from this point to this point, you have this what's called the Frankfurt plane. This Frankfurt plane is going to be a great indicator if it is parallel to the floor that the patient is in a good position. And of course this middle line saying the patient is not tilted to the right or to the left. So when you project those beams, you make sure that this point uh, from the bottom of the orbit to the middle of the ear is parallel to the ground. Now if it is not parallel to the ground, if the chin is lifted up or down, you will have some errors that we're going to look right now. So if the chin is too far up, you're going to have this flat smile or the reverse smile. Usually we have a smile like this. That's why we have a smiley face that looks like this. And can you imagine if the patient has this flat smile because the chin is too far up? And if you can see the opposite, the chin is too far down, which creates this exaggerated smile. So this is how I remember it. I just draw a simple line, thinking this is just my lips. And here I have this chin. If the chin goes up, you have this reverse smile. If the chin goes down, you have this exaggerated smile. Does that make sense? So if you can see here, because the chin is too far down, this area is exaggerated as well. Many different things that are going wrong because of this little error. Now let's think about the chin being too far forward. The forward meaning um, there's a bite block and there's a notch over here. The patient is supposed to put the interior teeth right here in the notch. But if the patient goes a little forward like this, well, you have this what's called the thin interiors or the skinny interiors. They're smaller than normal. Now let's think about this. The camera moves around your head, okay? But I'm gonna reposition the, um, the arch to be like this. So this is the camera, this is the model. You know by principle that if you go towards the camera close, the object is gonna look big. When you go further away, the object is gonna look small. So here, because the bite block was like this and the patient moved towards this direction, meaning further away from the camera, the teeth are gonna look smaller. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, this is the last resort. Do you see the T in thin and the T in front? Match those. If you see thin interiors, you know the patient is biting too much forward to the front. Let's look at the opposite. The patient is biting back. So think about this bite block again. This is the notch, the patient is biting here. If you think about it, the interior teeth are getting closer to the camera. When, does that, when that happens, this looks bigger. That's why you have those fat interiors, large interiors. Again, last resort, see the A in fat and see the A in back. 
match those. You have fat interiors, the head is a little too far back. So I hope this all makes sense today we reviewed four errors that we can make in the panel. If you want to continue, you can go to smarterda.com, find the RHS or uh, original radiographic course. You can have immediate answers and track your progress. Let me know if you have any questions. My name is Claire. Email claire at smarterda.com. Thank you.